Hello. This video is going to focus on the use of Gradebook in the plat in the Edsby platform, specifically some setup options that are available. This video will focus on an elementary uh, setup for grades one to eight. So let's get into a class and get started. Again, you can see we are in the ADSB demo site, so none of these are real classes or real people. I am Corey Ingram, a fictitious teacher, and I'm going to go into Corey Science and Technology classroom. You can go into any of your classrooms uh, in order to do this. As we go into the Science and Technology classroom, you'll see that it's a blank class. If you've been using Edsby already, there will be some stuff that is on the home screen to your or the course home screen. If you've added some items, you may have stuff that's already in the gradebook that you are not even aware of yet. So just keep that in mind when we go into the gradebook. You might have added some things unknowingly. First thing we're going to do before we get into the actual gradebook is go into some setup options. So this is something you'll actually have to do for each of your classes that you want to use the gradebook with. The setup is up in the top right hand corner. You'll see a little down arrow or a chevron we're calling it. If we click that, we get a drop down menu and there's a setup option within that drop down menu. You'll see in the setup options, about halfway down on the right, there is a show averages in gradebook and perspective. So Edsby gives us the ability to average all of the marks that we're going to put in, all of the summative marks, assessment of learning marks that we record into our gradebook, or we can turn off so that those averages don't show up in the gradebook. However, Edsby will still calculate an average that can be used later for a report card or to issue progress reports to students. So even if we turn the option off in the actual gradebook itself so that you as the teacher don't see it, it will still do this calculation for you. We can override it in some instances, specifically on the report card, but just keep that in mind. You can or can uh, show the can or cannot show the average there. So we'll close that. We'll leave it as showing the average for the time being, just for argument's sake, to sh to see how that manifests itself within the uh, gradebook itself. So we'll close out of there, and we're back to the course homepage. So now it's time to go into the actual gradebook, which for this class or for any class will be located up in the toward the top right hand corner there is a gradebook button we'll click into that and we should see something that looks similar to what's on my screen right now so reporting periods one and two should be at the top of your uh, uh, of a couple of columns and that's because we have this view up here set to the report period view we have the reporting period view we also have a units view and you can see because I don't have any units available here I don't get any headers on those columns so we'll actually take a minute we're gonna go into a different class and show you how to set up those units because for a few classes math language and French you might want to have those unit headers so that you uh, have summaries of those overall strands on which you need to report so let's just pop into a different class and see what that looks like Okay, so here I am in a language arts class, an English class for grade three, still same teacher. And down in the right hand or left hand corner, sorry, of my home page, you'll see a content area. If we go into the content area, you'll notice that for language arts, I've set up units for reading, writing, oral communication, and media literacy, the four strands of English that you need to report on. So if you are interested in setting up your gradebook with these units, what I would advise you to do, click the edit button. When you do click edit, on the right at the top level where it says language arts, if I go over to the right, I can click the plus sign, I can add a new unit. When I add that unit, give it a title, save it, and it'll populate into this list with, with your other units. So if you go ahead and do that, what will actually happen is now when I go back to my gradebook, and I select the units view at the top right hand corner here you'll see that I now have new columns for each of those four units that I've created which makes it a lot easier in terms of reporting on any or all of those strands as we're required to do you will also notice as some teachers have that we have two filters reporting periods and units however in elementary you do have to report on various strands for the first period and then the second period separately. However, Edsby does not give us the ability to combine those two filters together so that we have marks or evaluations for 
reading, writing, oral communication in first term, and the same in second term. So our advice, our best thinking at the time uh, of production, is to create two units for each of these uh, strands. So a reading reporting period one or term one, reading reporting period two. So we would have eight units instead of four until Edsby makes that change to allow us the ability to combine those filters. That's our workaround for the time being. We're going to go back now to the science class and talk about some other considerations now that we've learned how to set up those units if we do want them in some of our stranded classes. Okay, so here we are back in our science and technology gradebook. We don't have any assessment items in. You'll see that we don't have any units set up either. You can or can't choose. You can choose to set units up regardless in science if you do want to filter in terms of all those different strands, or you can leave it as it is. So what we want to do now is go over uh, some weighting considerations uh, because there are two layers of weighting within Edsby. There's kind of an overall weighting mechanism and then an assignment by assignment or assessment by assessment weighting mechanism. So we want to look at both and just what our best thinking is from a board perspective moving forward with each. So the first layer is we'll go to the top layer of weighting, which is in the top right-hand corner inside of our gradebook. You'll see a little gear accompanied by a little chevron there beside it, indicating a drop-down menu. We'll go to the edit weighting option within that menu, and this interface will pop up. So you'll notice uh, we'll talk often about buckets for weighting, and inside the weighting buckets we can do a number of things. Now, we're advising... Uh, again, everyone just to leave their waiting buckets alone. Don't touch the waiting buckets. Everything that we put in uh, will will go into this everything else section. Uh, what the waiting buckets are, just so you know what they are uh, inside of there, is just a way to chop our hundred percent of our full of our mark. And again, I know if you're below grade seven, you're not doing percentages, but uh, for argument's sake, we can. If we click the drop down, we can actually choose to chop our markup, for lack of a better term, into a certain percentage for tests, quizzes, assignments, for example, for knowledge, thinking, communication, application, which we've done for many years uh, in the secondary panel. However, we're again suggesting that we leave this alone. We want to recognize that it is there, but we're not going to go in and um, and change anything inside the waiting buckets. So we'll close out of here. We are going to come back in here in a minute once we get some assessment items into the gradebook. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add some assessment items now into our gradebook for our science and technology class and just list some considerations that we'll want to make in terms of uh, the weighting inside of each assessment item. So let's go ahead and add some assessment items. Again, we're going to do that in the gradebook. You can do them in a variety of other places inside of Edsby as well. So just keep that in mind um, that if you add an assessment from that news feed or in the content builder or anything else you might be using, they will actually populate here into the gradebook as well. So to add an assessment item inside of the gradebook, we can click the Add Assessment button up at the top, top right. You'll see a drop-down list with a variety of different types of assessment will come up. You can also add your own custom types of assessment. For now, we'll just go in and add an assignment. And you'll see that this interface, which is uh, common in, in all the different places that you add assessment items, will pop up. We need to give the assignment a name, so we're in sci science, so we'll, uh, we'll give it a name. We also need to enter a unit. Now, you'll, you'll notice that when we were in the language class, we had entered units in the content builder. Those would actually populate into this unit list that we have to choose from. But here, because we haven't added units anywhere else, we will have to add some sort of unit to our science and technology class. We also can add expectations directly into uh, the assignment or the assessment item. We can pop that out and look at what that looks like, and you'll see that it does pull the uh, strands, overall expectations, and specific expectations from the curriculum. For the time being, Edsby does make us select an overall expectation, a uh, sorry, a strand, an overall expectation, and a specific expectation. So we can't actually stop at one of the first two columns. We actually have to select all three columns. We have asked in the future to maybe give us the ability to stop at an overall expectation, especially for summative purposes where we want to be accountable to those overall expectations in our reporting. However, uh, for the time being, we will, we will 
use these because we have to go to the specific expectation and just keep that in mind moving forward. So we'll say that we're done and we have the expectation attached. We'll fill in a few of these other things and then we'll, we'll move down to the other section. Okay, so we've given our assignment a name. We've created a unit. We'll scroll down a little bit because the grading section at the bottom plays a heavy uh, plays a heavy factor in, in what we wanted to talk about uh, today. So in the purpose of assessment that's listed here, we actually have three options, assessment of learning, assessment for and as. So we have the separation of our summative assessment of learning from our formative assessment items for and as. So the nice thing about the gradebook is that we can put those formative items in and we don't need to ass assign a weighting, as you can see down here, like we do. If it's an assessment of learning, we have to fill in a weighting. If it's for or as learning, you'll notice that that weighting field disappears and it gives us a little note that this is going to change our averages. Anything that's as or for learning will not contribute to that average that I had alluded to that the gradebook calculates. So for the time being, we're going to focus on our assessments of learning. We are going to select a method of assessment. So there are a number of different methods that we can assess with. For the time being, we'll select four level plus minus, and we need to give that a weighting that we will use uh, for all of these assessment items moving forward relative to one another. So what we are suggesting from a board level is to pick a baseline weighting and to use that weighting moving forward and, and kind of use that as a relative starting point. So whether you use 1 or 10 or 100, we want to pick a weighting value and kind of just keep that in mind and weight everything else with respect to that. Because let's say I put everything into my gradebook with a weighting of 10. Everything that's an assessment of learning, if it has a weighting of 10, will mean that all of those assessment items have equal weighting or equal value, equal importance in the calculation of that grade. So maybe you'll want to weight some things uh, larger. Maybe something has more overall expectations. It's a uh, it's a lot richer task. It's it, it, you know, however you want to determine that within your school or or you know within a group of teachers. That weighting value maybe I want to give it a 20 or a 30 relative to that baseline of 10. So our suggestion again, pick a baseline, kind of stick with that, and weight everything else with respect to that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. And you'll see when I do that, that that field now, I have a new column within my, uh, within my gradebook for forces in the environment, my assignment. And I've also created a unit within that assessment creation. And because I have my view set to unit, I now have a new column header, just like I did in my languages class earlier. So I'm going to go ahead, add a few more assignments in and some marks, and then look, look at what we might do moving forward in terms of uh, the relative weighting of those assignments. Okay, so you'll see now that I've added a few assessment items into my gradebook in science. Uh, I've used some different marking schemes uh, in order to do that, and I've added in a few marks so that you can kind of see that Edsby will calculate that average for you. It'll give you a unit mark. It'll also give you an overall mark. So if you have separate units, it's still going to calculate this overall average whether you really want it or not. So what I've done when I created these assessment items is I gave different weightings to them. Now, in order for me to go back later in the year and check what those weightings are, it makes it very difficult if I have to go into each assignment and kind of write down what each of them are just to make sure that I've used uh, the proper weighting relative to one another. So kind of a trick or a way to view all of your assessment items and all of your summative assessment items and their weightings is to go back into our edit weighting section. So we're back up here in the top right hand corner where the gear is. We'll go back into the edit weighting section. You'll see that we now have three assessments in the everything else bucket. And if we click on those, we'll actually see the weighting of each of these assessment items and then the total percentage of the mark that they're accounting for. If we had formative assessment items as well, they would be listed in this similar area. And what we can do here is we can say, oh, geez, I, I wrote this test. I wanted it to have the same weighting. I can actually adjust the weightings within this section right here, and that will effectively change the weighting at the other level as well. So that's nice, nice quick way to get an overview of all your assessments, the weightings of each assessment relative to one another, and adjust them accordingly. Okay, so that concludes our gradebook setup for an elementary classroom video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, uh, to email any of us, Mike, Tyler, or Marty. Uh, have a great day.